Well, welcome to session five of How to Kill a Bad Habit. We've looked at the nature of our desires, how they work on us, how they lure our mind's attention and stir our heart's affections. We've seen the anatomy of our enemy. And we've looked downstream of our temptation. If I engage in this act, let me look at the destruction downstream. And if I don't like those outcomes, that helps me change the inputs. Now, the next tool is we want to look upstream at the deception. And again, James helps us here. He says, each one of us is lured and enticed by his own desire. And when desire is conceived, she gives birth to sin. And sin, when it's fully grown, brings forth death. But then he says, do not be deceived, my beloved brothers. Every good and perfect gift comes down from above, coming from the Father of lights, in whom there is no shadow or shifting due to change. He says, the way to fight temptation is to look downstream at the destruction and to look upstream at the deception. Every bad habit, every sin, every addiction, it has destruction downstream, but it has deception upstream. But then notice the nature of the deception. The deception's not, hey, this beverage or habit or proclivity will be life enhancing. He points upward and says, the deception, my dear brothers, is that every good and perfect gift doesn't come down from your father above. He said the lie that gives so much power to our sins is that God is not a good dad who will take care of us. See, every behavior is undergirded by a belief. It's our beliefs that give strength and power and stability to our behaviors. And so we do well here to analyze what do I really believe about God and about myself? Again, Patrick Carnes, one of the leading voices on addiction, I was fascinated to read as this man who studied people who've gone to different variety of chemicals to find relief from pain. Why do they do that when they know this is a destructive path? He said, underneath every addiction is the belief that I am unloved and unlovable. He said addiction at its root is an intimacy disorder. I don't believe anyone cares about me. I believe if they really knew me with all my pain and brokenness, they would reject me. So rather than going to a community and a place of love, I go to a pill or a beverage or a screen to alleviate the pain I feel inside. And so here James gives us a good tool. If you're wrestling with a particular habit or you're wrestling with an addiction or a sin, he says, look upstream at the deception. What's the lie I'm believing that's giving force to this behavior? And do not be deceived. Every good and perfect gift comes from your dad. Many of us, we've engaged in these behaviors because we believe if I just pray or trust God, he won't provide for me. If I, if I trust the way he says to handle sexuality, it won't work out for me. If I trust the way he says to handle money, I may be poor. If I trust the way he says to handle relationships or success, I may lose and we get scared. So we begin to try to fix things and end up making a mess. And so one of the best ways to fight the battle is to fight it on the grounds of belief. Do I believe I have a father in heaven who loves me? And if I believe I have a father in heaven who loves me, then I believe he's going to do good for me. That's what the scriptures say. And that even pain has the potential in it to give me wisdom, as James said earlier. That even my difficulties, if I decide to watch and pray, God can not only show me a way out of temptation, but to lose hardship to become a more humble and a wise human being. I can trust my father. And when you rest in the love of God, the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and his grace. I'll tell you, one of the most evil things you could ever do to me would be to convince my little daughters that I don't love them. Tell them to go somewhere else to find love or acceptance or care. Go, tell them to go out into the streets uh, to find someone who will give them a modicum of happiness. That'd be an evil thing. And the Bible tells us that's what the devil does to us. He convinces you your God doesn't care about you. And so you go other places to find comfort. That's what happened in the garden with Eve. Notice the serpent didn't start talking about fruit and how delicious it is. He doesn't start there. Where does he start? Did God really say, you can't eat from every tree? He brings up theology, but notice how he does it. Hey, it looks like God's holding out on you, Eve. It looks like if you really trust him, he's gonna keep you from some life enhancing experiences. The only way to really experience the beauty of life is to rebel against the author of life. And to make sin look attractive, he had to make God first look ugly. And for many of us, the way to walk away from an addiction is to risk believing that God has affection for us. And let me tell you something, Pastor Louis Giglio says it this way, 
It was Jesus' way of fighting in the desert that helps us. How was he able to fight the temptations of the enemy in the wilderness? Because in the scene right before that, his father looked at him while he was being baptized and says, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. And that was before Jesus had done anything. He hadn't healed anybody. All the blind people were still blind. All the lame people were still lame. And yet the father looks down and says, that's my son and I am well pleased in him. And it was the pleasure of his father that empowered Jesus to say no to the pressure of the desert. And it's the same with you, and it's the same with me. So your challenge today is to write out what are the lies I'm believing that are giving energy to this addictive behavior in my life I wanna seize? What's the deception that's leading me to temptation and leading me to destruction? Let's draw the battle line at the lie and go to war there and begin to fight to believe, I have a God in heaven who loves me. He gives me every good and perfect gift I can trust in. And when you rest in the love of God, I promise you, you will keep yourself from going to many deceptive streams to find relief. Let's lean hard into Him and find out how strong and how loving He is. Give that a shot, and I'll see you next time.